The Boston Celtics are going to the NBA Finals, sweeping the Indiana Pacers. What else am I going to talk about right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast? Thanks to Blockbuster Bread, it's holiday season, drop Drew in the mix. And three from KT, no, we not on the next. Flushing competition like Al on Giannis. Juice and Big Zeus still be town's finest. Been a great team going up in the rafters. Watch the scene game in locked on after. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from D. White on the breakdown. John on the mic, document and domination. Matter pen a back, they it's all seas nation. Rain and Jake, how we started raising business, how we finish. Locked on. Celtics pod, home of the winners. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network where it's your team every day and I got you covered every single day, Monday through Friday with a free, fresh podcast that drops directly to your device. If you are subscribed, so do that, subscribe, get onto that YouTube page, get into that comment section, let me know what you're thinking. I'm John Corrales. If you're new to the show, I used to play a long time ago. Now I'm a beat writer covering the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see me here uh, up in the Loge section of Gainbridge Fieldhouse here in Indianapolis, Indiana. They are cleaning things up, getting ready, uh, tearing down, and I'll move out of the way, tearing down the Indiana Pacers floor, getting ready to put down the Indiana Fever floor, and they're not going to have to tear that up because the Pacers season is over. The Boston Celtics are the Eastern Conference champions. Jalen Brown is your MVP, and the Boston Celtics are going to the NBA Finals. So this is just, I don't know, free-form show. I normally have all the bullet points over here on the side, uh, over my there, there that way. <laughs> uh, but you know what? They're headed to the NBA Finals. So let's just bask in the glow. Bask in the glory. First of all, let me just say, Shout out to the Indiana Pacers and credit the every single Celtic. The entire starting five spoke after the game. Joe Mazzulla spoke after the game. And everybody had the same thing to say right off the bat. They said, uh, credit to the Indiana Pacers, credit to them. They they kept on coming. They didn't die. Like they they didn't, they were trying to win this game and they weren't ready to lay lay down. This wasn't a a blowout this this very easily very easily could have been three one pacers in this series so yes it goes down as a sweep and yes the celtics are 12 and 2 in the playoffs heading to the nba finals but just going to start out by saying credit to the pacers this was the toughest of the three series and a couple of tough breaks the celtics learning from past mistakes. Their execution down the stretch was great. In this game, uh, Pascal Siakam hit a floater with like 330 something, 333 or somewhere in that range on, on the clock. Joe Mazzulla calls a timeout. Pacers never score again. The Pacers are a good young team. They've got a lot to figure out, uh, but their, their late game execu- execution is not the best. Boston's has been really good. The Celtics went on a, uh, what was their final run there? Uh, 20 to 8 over the last 857. And they they just closed out this uh, this game. Der- uh, uh, Derek White hits the three-pointer. Jalen Brown with a monster stretch with the block shot on one end. Comes down, driving kick to Derek White for three. And the Celtics close this thing out. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. On FanDuel right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So as far as this game goes, I I don't need to go too deep into it because this series is over. Now we're looking ahead, presumably to the Dallas Mavericks, who are up 3-0 in their series. We're... I, look, the Celtics didn't look great. They didn't look great in this series, in, in this in this game. Uh, they didn't look good for a lot of these games. They, they look good in, in game two. That's a credit to the Pacers and, and their offense, even without Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, in this game, I didn't think the Celtics were at their most energetic, but they, they found what they needed to find down the stretch. And they 
Sean Grandy had the great call after the game or like right at the end of the game where he talks about like maybe the basketball gods uh, heard the people saying the Celtics needed to be battle tested. And here they are in, in four games, three of these games, they were battle tested. The first one, maybe a little bit of a gift game one, maybe a little bit of a gift from the Pacers games three and four, the Celtics went out and took those games. And again, Pacers execution down the stretch, not particularly great, but the Celtics came down and and took those games and that was battle tested. That's, that's a team that's learning and growing in front of our eyes. And now they're heading to the NBA finals. Shout out to Jalen Brown, Jalen Brown's number here. Uh, numbers here, 29 points, 11 of 22 shooting, four of eight from three, uh, six rebounds, two assists, three steals, and a block. Uh, just a great overall game from Jalen Brown, who who maybe at the beginning of the game was not playing his best. But towards the end, I think that, that closing stretch where the, it looked like there was a defensive miscommunication and Nemhard kind of – Maybe, maybe it was a, a misread. Jalen looked like he was playing Nemhard, like he was expecting Nemhard to go to the middle. Nemhard goes right. Jalen tracks him down, blocks the shot, comes down, drives, uh, and kind of loses the ball, but doesn't, right? Maybe in the past, that's a turnover from Jalen Brown, but he takes control, gets it over to Derek White. Derek was one for eight at that point, hits the three. He's two for nine to end the game. Uh, 16.7 to 14 overall shooting for him, but he hits that three on a night where he just could not find the range from deep, but shout out to Derek white who had, uh, officially <laughs> three blocks and five steals on the night. Uh, just an amazing, amazing defensive performance. The Celtics can get whatever they need from whomever is on the floor. And one thing Joe Mazzulla keeps saying is success looks different every night. And damn it, if he hasn't been right on the money with that, it's something that it's, you hear that national narrative and I don't want to go into what other, the national narrative is and all that stuff, but you hear the people talk about Jason Tatum's supposed to be taking over and Jalen Brown's supposed to be taking over. But the strength of this team is what we've seen over the past couple of games here. Yes, Tatum and Brown combined for, what, 55 points? But you get 33 from White and Holiday. And you get just seven from Al Horford. On a, The game after Al Horford goes seven of 12 from three, he goes one of three from three. He doesn't take a lot of shots. The game demanded something different. He had five assists in this game. The Celtics can just give the game whatever it needs. This is why I think they're going to win a championship. This is why I've thought they are going to win a championship all year long. I've been saying it from the beginning. It's not just that they have Jason Tatum. That's nice. It's not just that they have Jalen Brown. That's nice. It's that they have answers across the board. Whatever you throw at them, they can find the answer. Now, as long as they stay present and as long as they do what Joe Mazzulla has been saying, embrace the moment, all that stuff, and and play with a little bit of clarity. Okay, we're down. They were down eight with, uh, like, what was it five minutes to go in this game? They're down eight. And just find that clarity. Okay, what do we need to do? What what's doesn't matter how we got down eight. We're down eight right now. What do we need to do to get out of that? All right, let's figure this out. And it's Holiday backing down Obi Toppin. Obi Toppin's a 6'9 power forward. And, and Holiday uses a combination of strength and speed to get Toppin under the basket, gets the foul and one. Like that, that's just a play that the Celtics are capable of making. And they can wh- whatever you need. Derek White hitting that three. Jalen Brown driving and kicking. Jalen Brown driving and finishing. Jason Tatum driving and finishing. Or Jason Tatum hitting a three. All of these options are there. So whatever you leave, whatever poison you pick, it's the wrong poison. Right? So the Celtics, did they have it in this game? No, they didn't. Did they have the right energy in this game? No, they didn't. I tweeted out 
with a few minutes to go, it looked like the Pacers were like, please, Boston, will you sweep us? And Boston was like, ah, oh, do we have to? Can't you just do it for us? But the Celtics figured it out. They played three and a half good minutes of basketball when the game was close, and they are, are able to, to pull this out. Let's do a little bit more celebrating when we come back. Just talk about the this team getting just getting to the NBA Finals. We're, we're all in celebration mode here, so let's continue that in just a second. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. It's America's number one sports book. We've got the NBA Finals now coming up June 6th. NHL, Stanley, Cl- Stanley Cup uh, playoffs. Uh, we got baseball. We got WNBA. It's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. If you're a new customer and you want to sign up over at FanDuel.com slash locked on, you will get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. So go check it out. $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. You can bet that on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Now, I'd love to give you the odds for the Celtics in the NBA Finals, but we don't know who they're playing yet. So we're waiting to see uh, what that, uh, who that's going to be. I know the Mavs are the favorites. Uh, they're looking like they're going to sweep. But we'll see how that goes. But you can go ahead and bet. Maybe you want to bet on the, the Timberwolves. Put $5, and if the Timberwolves win, just put a money line bet down. If that wins, you get 150 bucks in bonus bets. So go check it out. FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. What makes America's what makes FanDuel America's number one sports book? Because they've got the tools to help you play responsibly. Go set your limits. Go set your your goals, your 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 budget. That helps you gamble responsibly. And you can have fun at FanDuel. It is America's number one sports book. Thank you for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Lockdown Sports Today, streaming 24-7 on YouTube, on the Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's all the big stories. It's going to be this podcast for sure in the rotation, all the big podcasts, Lockdown NBA. Uh, It's all there on Lockdown Sports Today. Just on. Leave it on all day and forget the screaming, talking heads on ESPN because that's just contrived stuff and we want real talk so check it out lockdown sports today all right um jalen brown after the game it was so funny because i asked him you know how it felt because he was legitimately surprised jalen brown wins the the larry bird trophy finals mvp and he's legitimately surprised and you could see uh they had the camera trained on him and NBC sports Boston tweeted it out. They had the camera trained on him and you hear Cedric Maxwell be, said, you know, it's my, uh, it's like, it's my privilege, Jalen Brown. And Jalen's like, Oh, expletive. <laughs> He's like, Oh, and everybody's like just jumping on him and all that stuff. And, and it was just a great moment. You, you don't see Jalen Brown smiling a whole lot. You know, behind the scenes, I'm sure he smiles plenty. But with us in front of the cameras, he's not smiling a whole lot. But he busted open the big toothy grin, uh, holding up his Larry Bird trophy and getting the the love from his teammates. And and just I'm happy for Jalen Brown because I know I know that this matters to him. And He'll say, no, it doesn't matter, but it does. It very clearly does. Because when I asked him about it after the game, he's like, yeah, I, I didn't expect it because I don't win Jack. I'm subbing in a word there. He, When you say that, it's very obvious. He, he, he would like to win stuff. And you know what? Even the person who will, will be like, oh, I don't care about awards. That, that person is probably like, I don't care about awards because I never win them. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't doesn't give me any validation. But when you win an award, you're like, oh, this is nice. That's that's nice to be recognized. Jalen Brown had a great series. He had the shot in game one to tie the game and send it to overtime. He had a huge game two. He had huge moments in games three and four and played great. And in this game, I think that sequence really is what sealed it. Uh, he did finish with more points than than Tatum, and Tatum certainly was deserving. It was actually a 5-4 uh, 
decision. So there were there were people who said it was Jason Tatum. And either way, I think, you know, borderline coin flip. Tatum, like I said, 26 points, 13 rebounds, 8 assists. I mean, he, he's been doing a lot here. But Jalen, I I would have, and I don't have a vote, but I would have voted for Jalen just, just because it's like, you know what? Jason's going to win a bunch of this stuff, and he's already won one. He'll win more. Like, I, I don't know what Jalen's future is, uh, but I tell you what. This is this is I would have voted for him just just to give him this moment because he deserves this moment. Man, he's worked hard. Jalen Brown has worked hard to get to this spot. He has grown his game every year. And now I'm saying this is a guy from now. I go back to the beginning, Jalen Brown's beginning, and, and this podcast has been around for I think all or most of his career. And I will admit, I remember sitting here years ago talking about Jalen Brown being just a 3 and D guy. There was a season where he was one of the best, if not the best, corner corner three-point shooters in the NBA. And I was like, this is it. If this is what we get from Jalen Brown, I am happy because he was a, a high level three and D like if he could. And at that point he was still getting, you know, he, he, his flaws of getting burned back door and kind of losing his focus on defense. And, and my argument was, I don't care. He doesn't have to do anything else. Just be this, just be this corner three guy and catch and shoot and defend. And I will be happy. This is exactly what you need from, you know, from the Celtics. And if, the third overall pick becomes a high level three and D starter level player in the NBA. You've won, you've hit. And to his credit, absolute credit. He never, never stayed in a box. And I learned years ago to stop putting him in a box. I, I have been extraordinarily wrong a couple years in a row back back early in his career because he works so hard at being better. He works so hard at being uh, the absolute best basketball player he could be. And that this right here is the culmination of that. And there's much more for him to do. We're not celebrating like this is the end of the season. There are four more wins to go get. There's a maximum of seven games left in this season, which is crazy to me that we're already here. That in a few weeks, the season will be over one way or the other. So I know that this is, I get the luxury of being a little more celebratory. Uh, but Jalen has grown into just this amazing basketball player, this p- kind of player that. Uh, I never saw coming and the playmaking and look two assists in this game. You look at it and you say two assists, what's two assists, but the, but moving the ball, attacking, drawing the defense, moving the ball. And, and, and in this game, maybe a little, a little extra ISO from Jason and Jalen, but regardless the ball movement, the creation, the space that he creates, even if he doesn't get a specific play. Like there was a play, I want to say maybe it was game two, where the, it was a, a transition play. It was a fast break, and the ball was coming up the right slot. And Jalen, from way behind the play, hustled up the floor. And I remember Pascal Siakam, Al Horford was kind of like floating out to the corner and Pascal Siakam was in the lane. Maybe it was game three, whatever it was. uh, It was Jalen streaking down that left side and Siakam is seeing the floor, is seeing a guard coming up with the ball. Might've been Derek White and Jalen coming up the right side. And you're like, oh, he's streaking. He's, he's one of the best finishers in the league in transition. I've got to account for him. And he, he just 
ran over and away from Al Horford in the left corner, and the ball went over to Horford, and he hits the three. It had to be game three because that's when he hit a bunch of threes. Regardless, that is a heady, uh, hustling kind of you know heart desire kind of play, but also a smart play from Jalen Brown that me there's nothing in the box score. There's literally no stat that can d- can tell you what he did. But when you watch and you see him make a play like that, all he did was run up the floor. But if he didn't sprint and get into into position to help space the floor, if he didn't space, then you don't get that opening for Al Horford. That type of play is stuff that Jalen Brown might not have done in years past. Some of the plays that ended up as turnovers in the past, and you know what, frankly, have ended up as turnovers once or twice here in the in the postseason run, but he's making those plays so much less. So it, there's so much, it, it's so infrequent now that it, it really is an amazing progression. He has done really, really well. And and you look at like he shot eight three pointers in this game because he was hitting shots, but he'll he'll have games where he doesn't shoot as many threes. And if he's had an 0 for three night or a one for four night, not a big deal because he's attacking and getting to his spots. He's become deadly in the mid range. Just an amazing, amazing progression from Jalen Brown. So congratulations to him for uh, getting this MVP. Totally deserved. And I I really, really loved his moment after like after the game and then on the podium where like he brought it out there and he he's you can tell, man, he's happy. He's he, he projects a certain persona to us, but he that's that's a moment that really, really meant something to him. And I'm glad that he had that moment because he hasn't had a bunch of those. And like I think he got screwed out of the the all nba uh all defense i understand maybe he should have gotten more votes but i understand him not making all defense but i think he should have made all nba um hell i I might might have put him on the second team all nba to have him not make it at all so i'm glad he had this moment i'm glad he had this moment all right let's let's just wrap it up when we come back and um Share my thoughts. Uh, a sad. We'll end. We'll have to end on a sad note because Bill Walton died. But we'll talk about all that next. Let me share my thoughts on Bill Walton real quick because I want. I actually want to end on a high note. Uh, sad to hear that Bill, Bill Walton died. You heard Wick Grosbeck dedicate the this win to bill walton uh if you didn't see it or hear it before the game uh, rick carlisle who was bill walton's teammate on the 1986 celtics the championship celtics rick carlisle who now coaches the indiana pacers uh had so much to say talked for six seven minutes about bill walton and uh what he meant and him, you know, securing Grateful Dead tickets. I feel like 90% of, of Bill Walton's stories uh, are, are somehow applied to uh, the Grateful Dead. It's like Ben Affleck and, and, and the Red Sox in movies. Like, it's almost always involved somehow. So uh, go find that if you have time. Uh, if you're bored at work or something like that, uh, go check out Rick Carlisle's pregame press conference because he had a lot of great things to say about Bill Walton. Just a monster loss. You know, this is the the, the game of basketball lost the giant and uh, it's amazing. Uh, I I hope you read my, my, um, my obit on, uh, on Bill Walton on Boston sports journal. He'd gone through a lot, so much just to get to that point, the 1986 season. And as Rick Carlisle said, It was kind of like a miracle season. He played 80 games. This is the most he ever played. He wins six men of the year. He wins a championship. Uh, The first championship he'd won since 1977 when he was the man on the Portland Trailblazers. Just an amazing person, an amazing player, an amazing broadcaster. uh, And and he will be 
sorely, sorely missed. And he meant a lot to the Celtics organization. So um, there will be, I'm sure, in game one of the NBA Finals, uh, there will be a tribute that the Celtics will give to Bill Walton. They didn't have the opportunity. They did have a moment of silence, which was very nice here before the game. Uh, and I'm sure other stuff will be done by the NBA because he's he's a legend, a legendary player, legendary legendary person. So thoughts go out to Bill Walton's family. Uh, it's just a, a tremendous, tremendous loss. So the Celtics dedicated this win to to Bill and his memory. And look, this is going to be it's going to be a, a nice celebration for the Celtics. I'm sure that Bill Walton's family is is going to be you know at least comforted by the fact that the Celtics organization is thinking of him. And it's going to be just a great finals run. Whoever they play, Dallas Mavericks, I, I think the Mavericks are a good matchup, even with Luka, even with Kyrie. Uh, number one, I do think that they are more predictable in what they do. They're nowhere near as chaotic as, as this uh, Pacers team. Luka is going to be like... You don't stop Luka Doncic. You don't stop Kyrie Irving necessarily. Um, but if Porzingis is back, and I think he'll be back, that adds an element that, you know, an element of rim protection. I don't know what's going to happen with Derek Lively. Uh, he he it looked bad. If he avoided a concussion, then good for him. Then he'll play. And that adds an element of athleticism and playmaking that'll be very difficult for the Celtics to defend. But the 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 Mavs have been down in the last five minutes of all three of their wins. They've been down, uh, much like the Celtics, and they found ways to pull it out. But the way they pulled it out is kind of a Luca Kyrie my turn your turn thing. Excuse me. And I think where the Celtics are going to have their uh, advantage is that it's not just Tatum and Brown. It's everybody. It's this, this team is built for this moment because anybody can hit Brown, Tatum, Horford, White, Holiday, Porzingis, your top six guys, all of them, you'll take any one of them taking that shot. Maybe you'll rank it in a certain order, but you'll take any one of those guys taking a last-second shot because they've all done it before. But that's, listen, I, I have a challenge ahead of me because game one of the finals is June 6th, and that's not changing. There's no moving it up. If the Mavericks win on Tuesday night, there's no moving the finals up to June 1st or anything like that. It's June 6th is day one. So lock it in. We have to figure out what to talk about. And there will be plenty to talk about, but, you know, it's going to be like 10 days of, okay, now what? <laughs> no, trust me, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll, we'll do crossovers and stuff like that. Uh, it was so much fun. Like, this has been inevitable. This moment here has been inevitable. The Celtics up 3-0. We talk about it all year long I and how I think the Celtics are going to win a championship. And Celtics go up 3-0, and we just say, matter of fact, yep, they're, they're going to win. They're going to if, – if they don't sweep, they'll win it in five. And, you know, it, it just felt like – I've already talked about the Mavericks. I've talked to the Maver about the Mavericks now twice and, and the NBA Finals and all of that. But – there's something about that moment that when the when the buzzer sounds and the work that they've put in to get to the finals pays off. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can't see, well, maybe you can see my seats right over my left shoulder. Right up above, there's a little sliver there. That's where my seats are. So for people who aren't listening, it's about halfway up the arena, kind of in the corner. So I get this, I got to see everything. You get a good bird's eye view. It was a good view of the game, good view of the celebration. And 
the Celtics, they missed the shot with like four seconds to go. Holiday gets the rebound. The Pacers look like they're trying to foul. They can't get to him. Chaotic, a little crazy. Buzzer sounds. Celtics win. Al Horford just big swing, punching the air. Just the emotion, this relief, this feeling of like, I don't know what it is, just this, this joy. You see Al Horford's son running onto the floor. You see Al hugging his dad. You see, you just see the Celtics just erupt into celebration. And no matter what I say, no matter what people on the outside say, no matter how inevitable this thing felt, that moment showed like the work, the dedication, the just, and maybe some of the, you know, hey, people on the outside didn't think we could do it. That moment shows you how all in these guys are and how much they're playing for one another, how much they love each other, what kind of team this is. And even when Jalen got the MVP, Drew Holiday made a great point. Jalen was surprised, and maybe he was surprised because he doesn't win anything, like he said, but also to Drew's point, he's like, it means that he wasn't even thinking about that. He wasn't even thinking, I'm going to win the MVP. He was, it's not like he was trying to. He, he just was out there trying to win. So I really loved the moment, seeing those guys on the floor, celebrating it. And, and I think maybe there's some people, and I would have understood if they just said, you know what, robotic, we're not done yet. But this means something for Al, especially getting back to the finals and this feeling of like, this is his chance to get the ring. This is his chance, right? Four more wins. You got to beat the Mavericks, presumably. You got to beat the Mavericks four times out of seven. The Celtics feels like they have the matchups to do it, right? The Celtics are the best team in the in the NBA. Uh, the, the Mavs were middle of the pack. Things have changed since the all-star break. I'm sorry, sorry, the trade deadline. So they're a different team. They caught fire. They figured things out. So this is going to be a real challenge. But the Celtics are right, right there. And the emotions of like, oh, my God, this is about to happen. We're going to the final. Like I could see it just consuming Al Horford and those guys. It was just amazing to watch, fun to watch. And, you know, some of these moments you're like, really cool that I get to see this in person. And hopefully for Al Horford, this is this is his time to get that ring. Uh, I don't know what the national perspective is going to be. I feel like Luka is going to have his chances to win a, ch a championship. Kyrie has already done it. So... I don't know that there's any sentimental element there, but I think the sentiment should be with Al Horford, right? Like, but I don't know. I don't know what the national read is going to be. I feel like the national read is going to be like people are going to like glom on to the Mavericks and it's going to be, and you know, look, it gives Boston this like us against the world thing. So thank you to all the national narrative for that. Boston against the world. The Celtics are going to the NBA finals. There's so much to talk about with this, and the Celtics will be practicing, so I will be going to practices. I think the Celtics are going to get a couple of days off. Let's throw a mailbag in there this week. Let's throw some fun stuff in there this week. I'll try to get some guests on. We'll, we'll really do it up here. The Celtics are going to the finals. The Lockdown Celtics podcast is going to the finals. I will be in Dallas. I will be there whenever the Celtics win. There, hopefully... There will be a champagne shower somewhere that we can get. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So make sure you're sticking with the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Just all sorts of coverage, five days a week, bonus podcasts on the weekends, all sorts of podcasts for you to enhance your listening and your viewing pleasure. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. Get into that comment section on YouTube. Let me know what you're thinking. Celebrate this with everybody, Celtics fans. Let's get into those comments. 
and have some fun and share the podcast. Tell your friends. Tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.